the spring officially begins tomorrow. And our very own chief meteorologist, Mike Iskovitz, has more details on what an equinox means and what that means for us here in Houston in the months to come. All right, hey, thanks, Allison, and good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in again to Forecasting with Friends. Uh, we're talking about the equinox, which is the start of the spring season. What in the world is it? Well, tomorrow morning at 4.01 a.m., we have what's called the vernal equinox. And by the way, vernal is just a fancy way of saying spring. Uh, the definition is uh, of or referring to spring. So that's what it means. Now, our Earth here, which is represented by my squishy ball, <laughs> uh, is... Uh, with respect to its orbit around the sun is tilted. So it's tilted at 23 and a half degrees. If it were straight up and down like this and went around the sun um, thusly, there would be no seasons. We would just be the same all the time. Everybody would get 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime, and that would be that. And our weather across the planet would be much, much different than it is. But as it is right now, the Earth is tilted. And so as it goes around, there's some points in the orbit where the northern hemisphere is pointed more toward the sun, that's the first day of summer, and some parts of the orbit where the southern hemisphere is pointed toward the sun, that's our winter time. Tomorrow is the exact moment where we're right in between. So let me show you in a little bit of a fancier form on our weather graphics what that looks like. So uh, again, spring begins here with that equinox occurring at 401. So the Earth, as it spins around here, again, spins around at that angle on its axis. Um, throughout the last uh, several months, we've had more of the southern hemisphere of the Earth pointed at the sun. But now we're getting to this midway point in our orbit around the sun, which is what's at the bottom of the screen right now, where typically any time from March 19th through the 21st, this year it happens to be on the 20th, that's when we hit our vernal equinox. And that's the exact moment, when we talk about 4.01 a.m., it's the exact moment, you can actually time it down to the second if you wanted to, that the sun's rays shine directly on the equator. So uh, in that uh, circumstance, you get equal uh, amount of nighttime and equal daytime. That's what equinox means, equal night in Latin. So from here on out, if we get 12 hours of sunshine, approximately 12 hours of sunshine and 12 hours of nighttime today, then that means from today or from tomorrow morning, through the first day of summer, our amount of daylight will keep getting longer and longer and longer each day uh, until we reach our longest day of the year, which of course occurs on the first day of summer. So this is not to scale, by the way. If we were this close to the sun, we'd be in trouble, right? We wouldn't be here. But <laughs> tomorrow morning, the Earth's axis is not tilted toward the sun. It's now tilted away from the sun. And so we get that equal night uh, kind of scenario. Now, back on camera here, there are some misconceptions about this. Um, some of them are fun and harmless. I suppose they all are really. But in terms of understanding how all this happens, the Earth stays like this. Um, it actually does um, have a procession, kind of like if you spun a top and the top does start to go like this after a while. And I think it only spins around about once every 26,000 years or something like that. Um, so um, it's not anything that you'll notice in your lifetime. So it basically is like this the whole time, um, pointed in the same direction, which is why, for example, we have the North Star. You know, they used to use the North Star for navigation because it, uh, the uh, north pole of our planet points directly at this north star uh, so they could use that for navigation 13,000 years from now they won't be able to do that because this twists but um, I remember I had a teacher in college not a meteorology teacher he was a Spanish teacher and he said to the class and I had to sort of in a very very polite way correct him <laughs> that the earth goes tilts back and forth like this you know, on its axis throughout the year. And of course it doesn't do that uh, because there's nothing to push it that way. And if it did, we'd be, you know, feeling like we're being flushed around. Um, so it doesn't do that. It stays like this. And it's just because of its movement around the sun that the sun points at different parts of it throughout the year. So uh, by the way, you know, when people talk about 
you know, why is the weather so hard to forecast or why is the forecast wrong sometimes? This is one of the reasons why, because as we go around the sun, the sun does shine on different parts of the planet uh, with different intensities. And we also have, you know, uh, during our winter time, by the way, the sun is shining on the southern hemisphere, which is very largely covered in ocean. And then during our summertime, you know, there's more land in the northern hemisphere. We live on a complicated planet, everybody. But it's nice to know that we're all on the same page tomorrow. And um, if you want to try and stand up brooms or eggs, <laughs> knock yourself out. But there's no change in gravity tomorrow morning that's going to cause your broom or your egg to stand up any more than it would on any other day. So there you go. Happy almost spring, everybody, and welcome to spring officially on Thursday morning at 4.01 a.m. Allison. Mike's so good at explaining things, and I love that because he's probably like already seen TikToks or something that's like, oh, because it's the, you know, start of spring, the whole deal. You got to stand up your brooms. Not the case, but thank you so much, Mike. We appreciate that insight.